Hey kid, you got any Coke? <laughs> I mean Coca-Cola. I'm thirsty. Ever since 1971, when President Richard Nixon declared the war on drugs, public perception has changed about them because they were made illegal. But there was once a time not even that long ago when some of the harshest drugs were actually openly available over the counter. Here are 10 illegal drugs that used to be sold over the counter. Number 10 is marijuana. Okay, some of you are probably rolling your eyes at this one, but I'm starting the list with marijuana because it's quickly becoming more and more legalized in more and more countries and states. But surprisingly, it still remains a Schedule One narcotic, according to the US federal government, that can still prosecute growers, sellers, and users. The first ever recorded evidence of its use dates back to 2737 BC in China and has been used in civilizations across the world, including in Europe, Africa, and Asia. But it was declared illegal by the US Federal Bureau of Narcotics during the 1930s when racist campaigns scared the public about Mexican immigrants and hopped up jasmine prone to rape and murder. But before reefer madness, marijuana and hemp were grown by the founding fathers of the United States, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. It was widely available in catalogs and pharmacies to help with labor pain, nausea, and gout. Well, there you go, four score and seven blunts ago, you know what I'm saying? Number nine is Nembutal. Nembutal is the brand name of the barbiturate pentabarbital that was famously used by Judy Garland and Marilyn Monroe. It has many medical applications today as a sedative, pre-anesthetic, and short-term hypnotic, but it's also used to treat seizures and insomnia. However, in large doses, it can cause death by respiratory arrest, so it's often used in lethal injection executions. Pentabarbital was first invented in 1928 and marketed by Dr. John S. Lundy in 1930 as Nembutal, which was sold over the counter in suppository form. In, in case you don't know what that means, you, you put it up your butt. Believe it or not, it was considered safe enough to give to children to control their errant behavior, aid their sleep, and ease anxiety at the doctor's office. Not feeling well? Here you go, put this up your butt. You might feel better, or you might die. Number eight are Quaaludes. The hypnotic sedative methaquilon was first synthesized in India in 1951 and was marketed as Quaalude 300 in the United States and Mandrox or Sopors to the rest of the world in the mid-1960s as a safe alternative to barbiturates that relaxed muscles and aided insomnia. But it was widely abused by hepcats who called them lewds or disco biscuits and caused countless overdoses, especially when mixed with alcohol. But believe it or not, so-called stress clinics actually handed them out in large doses without a doctor's prescription until 1973. That is when it became a controlled substance requiring a prescription in the United States. But plenty of shady doctors were still willing to help out lewd enthusiasts. I just took me a disco biscuit going to sleep now. Bye bye. By 1984, the drug became Schedule 1 that outlawed its manufacturing, yet Quaaludes rank as the sixth best-selling sedative in history. And if you want to see their effect, go watch the movie Wolf of Wall Street. It's kind of like this, oh goodness. Number seven is GHB. Gamma hydroxybutyrate, known as GHB or just G, was a popular club drug during the 1990s and 2000s, but became Schedule 1 in the United States in 2000 and was banned in the United Kingdom in 2003 after its use as a date rape drug. But as you guessed it, it was sold over the counter, popularized in the 1980s with bodybuilders because it increased growth hormones. It was first developed in the United States to administer to patients pre-surgery, but it had too many side effects and ended up becoming a hit with club kids who called it liquid ecstasy because it created euphoria, lost inhibitions, and increased libido. In other words, you pop one and you're like, who wants to hump? But the greatest danger with GHB is that it becomes toxic when mixed with alcohol, and the difference between a fun night out and an overdose was only a few milligrams difference in dosage. 
Number six are amyl nitrites. Commonly known as poppers because of the sound made when users crush the glass holding the liquid, amyl nitrates provides a dizzy, euphoric rush from inhaling the fumes. Poppers were popular as a pick-me-up, often combined with other drugs to make even more intense highs. And they were available over the counter through the 1960s in the United States, but they were banned in 1968. However, crafty marketers changed their intended use to things like room deodorant. By the end of the 1980s, amyl nitrates were banned entirely in the United States, but remain legal in France and the United Kingdom. That's not very convincing. That's like putting meth in a little bottle and being like, don't ever smoke this, I'm just gonna put it in the corner, deodorizes the room. <laughs> Number five is methamphetamine. Speed Red's crystal glass and meth are all names for methamphetamines. The drug was first synthesized back in 1887 in Germany by chemist Lazar Idelano to battle depression, alcoholism, narcolepsy, and fatigue. It was even used in World War II by both Axis and Allied troops, including Hitler. Noradin, the brand name for over-the-counter methamphetamine, claimed to help with mild depression, promising few side effects besides paranoia, heart failure, and meth mouth. Meth mouth is when it gets dry, you gotta... Methamphetamines became a controlled substance in the United States in the 1970s, but are still used to treat ADHD and obesity. Yeah, but trust me, you don't want to do that. If you are a little overweight, you should probably just go to the gym and eat properly as opposed to smoking a little bit of the good stuff. Number four is opium. Heroin is the strongest illegal opioid, which still is nothing compared to modern synthetics like fentanyl that killed Prince, but original recipe opium extracted from the poppy flower has been an effective painkiller used by ancient Islamic societies since about 1676. The British fought wars with China during the 19th century for control of the lucrative trade and opium was available over the counter in Britain until 18 in the United States, opium was often sold as ludanum, a 10% powdered opium mixed with alcohol used to treat meningitis, menstrual cramps, yellow fever, and was even spoon-fed to infants to help them sleep. Yeah, I don't know, I gave Timmy a little bit of the opium and now he's on the ceiling. How do I get him down? Number three is morphine. Named for Morpheus, the Greek god of dreams, morphine was first isolated by Frederick Surdener in 1805 and marketed by Merrick in 1827. It was common on the battlefields for wounded soldiers and is still used in the medical world for pain management, surgery, and dying patients, but it's tightly regulated. But in its infancy, morphine was commonly found in the average person's medicine chest through the 19th and early 20th century and was available over the counter and even through the Sears catalog. Hmm, I think I'll order a bed, a couch, and a sweet, sweet hit it up morphine. In 1849, Miss Winslow's soothing syrup was on the market as a cure for children's teething with 65 milligrams of morphine per ounce. But in 1911, the American Medical Association declared morphine a baby killer and regulated it, but it remained over the counter in the United Kingdom all the way up to 1930. I say, those Americans are crazy for outlawing this. Let's take a sweet, sweet hit to feel good, yes? Number two is heroin. The modern opioid epidemic that ravages the Western world has its roots as a miracle drug created by Frederick Bayer and Company, who also gave us aspirin. German chemist Felix Hoffmann synthesized heroin from opium in 1898, and it was marketed as Bayer heroin hydrochloride, which doctors gave free samples out and was the key ingredient in children's cough syrup. Hey mom, I'm not feeling good. Don't ask any questions, just give me that sweet syrup. The human body converts heroin into morphine at twice the rate as the original Original compound. So the non-addictive wonder drug proved to be quite the opposite, creating severe dependency and withdrawals in the average consumer. Heroin ended up becoming a controlled substance in 1914 under the Harrison Narcotics Tax Act, yet continued to be prescribed in the United States until 1924 and in the United Kingdom until 1926. 
And number one is cocaine. Today, we associate cocaine with rock stars in the crack epidemic, but there was once a time when the drug was sold as a cure-all for everything from toothaches to alcoholism. The coco leaf has been used for thousands of years as a mild stimulant by the Inca and other South American civilizations. But in 1855, German chemist Frederick Gadke isolated cocaine hydrochloride, which was hundreds of times more potent than the organic compound. Drug companies still around today like Pfizer marketed this supposedly harmless wonder drug as cough drops, medicinal tonics, and could even be injected at home. Hey honey, welcome home, you want a beer? Nah, you know what I want. It was also found in food products like margarine, wine, and soda, including the little known brand Coca-Cola with cocaine in the original recipe, which is where it got its name from. And you thought the intro of this video was a joke. <laughs> nope. So those were 10 illegal drugs that used to be sold over the counter. And if you guys enjoyed this, remember to give it a big thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications by clicking the bell beside the subscribe button so that you never miss a thing because I release new videos all the time. Thank you guys for watching and I'm gonna go have a hit of that good, good cough syrup. <clears throat> I have a cold cough syrup. Bye.